In this video, I'm going to be going over the various steps that take place um, during combat and all the related sub-steps that go with it. So we'll be going over space combat, um, all the components within it such as anti-fighter barrage, um, how to sustain damage during a combat, um, space cannon, offense and defense, bombardment, ground combat, and the ability rounds that take place in them as well. Alright, so how to initiate a combat? Well, we've already seen how to activate a system, and if you're not sure how to do that, you can head on over to, I think it's tutorial video number two. So right here, we're, we are from the perspective of the Embers of Mua, and we're going to be invading the L1Z1X MineNet's home system where they have ships as well as infantry, so we'll be able to initiate a ground or a combat scenario. In uh, our space area, we have one war sun, uh, two fighters, and four infantry. So, first of all, we have to go ahead and activate the system. We're going to pass on playing any abilities such as flank speed. Now, because we've activated someone else's system, the other players actually are going to get a chance to play abilities as well. And this would be the opportunity for a player to play a card such as Ceasefire, um, which, would, which would shut down our um, assault here entirely. But we want to go through the combat, so we're not going to do that. And now we get to the move ship step, so we're going to just click on the system we want to move all our ships from and select all units. And we'll confirm moving four infantry, two fighters, and one war son. So the first thing that'll happen, if possible, is the space cannon offense. And because, as I saw before, um, we do see that there is a PDS on the home planet here. Now before I get into the actual combat um, related steps, I just want to go over the, the little interface here to show you how to see all the units involved in a combat. You can either look at this through the, the main board itself, and you can see all the units here, minus the infantry of course. Recall that if you hover a fighter model, you'll see how many fighters there are there. The other thing you can do, and you'll need this later for purposes of assigning hits and sustaining damage, as usual, if you click on the space region, you'll see the units of the player who is occupying the active system to begin with. So that is the L1Z1X MyNet player. But you also notice if we have the active system selected, there's this little ship icon to the top left of the hexagon. And if we click this, at the top of your screen, you'll see the invading ships. Um, from the player who is uh, the, on the offense, basically, the one initiating the combat. So there's two ways you can see the, the units involved in the combat. So Space Cannon Offense, if we head on over to Bob's tab, he'll be asked to perform the Space Cannon Offense ability, and this is optional. And it's really straightforward. You click the green check mark, if you'd like to perform the space cannon offense, and you click the red X if you don't. So for example, clicking the red X here, I would be asked to confirm that I don't wanna fire my space cannons. Let's go ahead and fire them and see what happens. So I fire my space cannon as the L1Z1X minute and I've produced one hit. Going back to Charlie's tab, we're informed that one hit has been produced against us. And now, you'll see that we don't quite assign hits yet. There's actually what's called the ability round here. And the ability round allows us to um, play any game components related to what would happen before assigning hits. So some of the things you can do here are, for example, sustain damage, play action cards such as shields holding, or rather not shields holding, but maneuvering jets, um, shield holding is only relevant for combat. So one of the things here um, that's important to emphasize is sustaining damage is not assigning a hit. It's actually canceling a hit. So it doesn't occur during the um, assign hit step. Now, 
we realize that this is uh, can be easily missed. So what will happen here is if you actually go to pass on this ability round, you'll get a warning message. The warning message reads, um, reminder, you can sustain damage during this timing window, and then it'll tell you how to sustain damage. So to sustain damage, click on the unit you wish to sustain damage with in the enlarged unit display in the active system. So we have one hit currently. And we, what we can do is we click on the active system and we find our unit that can sustain damage. Since we're the embers of Muad, the only ship we have that can sustain damage here um, is our war zone. So if we click it, we'll be asked to confirm that we want to sustain damage. And the reason why it's important here is because we have to keep in mind responses like direct hit. So let's go ahead and actually sustain damage. And what you'll notice actually here is if you look at the board now, the war sun appears to be tilted. And this is just the, um, the display as a shorthand form to show that a unit in the combat has sustained damage. So we've, we've effectively canceled that hit. Now other players will get a chance to respond to the ability that we just used of sustaining damage. So for example, if Bob had a direct hit card going over to Bob's tab, now would be the time to play it. Not having a direct hit card, uh, Bob will just pass here. Coming back over to the Embers of Muad's turn, we, we could have the option to play more abilities if we saw fit. But since we canceled that hit, um, we're not going to play any more abilities. Before we continue moving on to the next step, we'll just look at the game log here. And what we'll see that anytime dice are rolled, you'll get a roll summary that you can click open here. And over here, you can see the unit that rolled, its unit card, uh, the specific results of the roll, whether they hit or missed, as well as modifiers that apply to them. So because we have because we have plasma scoring, we get two rolls, and because the other player has anti-mass deflectors, we had minus one applied to our rolls. So we'll go ahead and finish up the ability round here. And no hits to assign, so we'll get to resolve an ability at the start of a space combat. The start of a space combat, you can basically play components. Um, that are indicated as such. So for example, if we look at our action cards here, you'll see we have morale boost. Morale boost specifically says at the start of a space combat, or the start of a combat round, which includes at the start of a space combat, since that would be the first round. And then we would be able to apply plus one to the results of each of our unit's combat rolls. Other things such as technology cards, um, for example, if you had a salt cannon, which we don't, but let's just take a look here. Salt cannon says at the start of a space combat. So if you did have a salt cannon, you would double click it here um, to resolve that ability as well. But we're gonna go ahead and pass for now on this ability round. Bob will also get the chance, but we'll also pass. This brings us to the next portion of the space combat, which is the anti-fighter barrage. So, taking a look at the active system again, we'll notice that the Embers of Muad player has fighters, and the L1Z1X Minet player has a destroyer. The destroyer had anti-fighter barrage, and this occurs um, at, the at the first round, just before the first round of the space combat initiates. So we can choose either to not do this by clicking the red X, or we can choose to do it by clicking the green check mark. So if we click the green check mark and confirm, we will roll and we'll produce zero hits. Again, if you go into your game log, you can see this summary, and you can see that we rolled five and one when we were required nine or higher to produce hits. After anti-fighter barrage comes the first chance to announce a retreat. Retreats are allowed if, you, if there is a system adjacent to you that has a unit of yours or planets that you control. 
as, well, as well as there not being enemy units in that space region. So because the L1Z1X MyNet has these planets under their control, they have the option to retreat if they so desire. Seeing as they probably feel like they might be um, overwhelmed here with this against this war sun and these fighters, it might be prudent here to announce a retreat. So let's see what happens here. When you announce a retreat, you don't actually make any selections yet. That'll come later if you can retreat if you survive the combat. So we will announce the retreat here. And for now, we just click yes. And the defender will always get the option to retreat first. So the defender has announced retreat. Going back over to the Embers of Muad's tab, we now are at the roll dice for the first round of space combat. The only thing to do here is to click the green check mark and roll your dice. So we've produced four hits and let's go over to the game log to see that. And you can see that one of our fighters hit and our war son uh, rolled uh, three hits. Going over to the L1Z1X MyNets tab, we'll roll dice for space combat and we'll produce one hit. Now, we're going to resolve an ability here um, before we assign our one hit. And so for that, again, here we can sustain damage or play a card such as shield holding um, to be able to cancel um, up to two hits. Now, one of the things that I think we want to demonstrate here is the ability to retreat. So, very quickly, um, just going to give the L1Z1X my net. The L1Z1X, the L1Z1X MyNet, a shield holding. So that way we have enough. Um, I think we should have enough there to cancel off the hits. So let me just refresh the games here really quick. So. Um, resolving an ability before the Embers of Muat player assign hits. Um, we're not going to do anything here, so we'll pass. Um, now, Bob here is the L1Z1X MyNet player, so if we if we're going to pass on an ability round before we assign hits, we'll get again, we'll get that warning message that we're skipping a sustained damage window. So we don't want to do that. So let's sustain damage on our Dreadnought. So we've sustained damage on our Dreadnought there. Now, going back over to Charlie's tab. Um, Charlie now has the option to play a direct hit card. And let's see what happens if Charlie plays the direct hit card. Now, what will happen is the ship won't get destroyed right away because there is the option for other players to respond to this, including players not involved in the combat. And this basically refers to the sabotage uh, action card. So for example, um, Alice here, if Alice had a sabotage, Alice could cancel the card. Um, Bob has a sabotage. So Bob's gonna go ahead and uh, you can see here, we can, we can cancel the card um, with the faction beside it.
The other thing we can do here is play uh, shields holding. So right now, uh, recall we had four hits assigned to us. We've canceled one with the direct hit. We can cancel um, two more with shield holding. And we'll, we'll make sure nobody sabotages this as they will pass on their ability rounds. And finally, we get to um, the L1Z1X mine and Bob's turn to assign hits. So Bob has should have one hit to assign after we've canceled three of them. And so the reason why I didn't want to assign all the hits is because I want to demonstrate the retreat step. So we'll assign one hit. And the way to assign hits is you click them um, just like the way you sustain damage. You click the model up uh, down here because um, these are your units. If you were a yellow player, you'd click them up here. So we click hit assign to destroy. We have zero hits left to assign. We can reset the choices by clicking the red X or we can confirm by clicking the green check mark. So let's confirm that. Now you can see that that destroyer is no longer on the board. And we just have our dreadnought left. And now because we have survived the combat round, we have the ability now to retreat. So to retreat, the first thing you're going to want to do is double click the system you want to retreat to. Now you must select a valid system. Um, otherwise, the game will later on tell you when you confirm that you won't be able to retreat. So I'll double click this uh, new Albion star point system and queue that up for retreat. And then what we can do here is select all units, meaning take the Dreadnought and all our infantry. But I want to leave the infantry to demonstrate ground combat. So I will just click the Dreadnought and click Confirm. And you can see that our Dreadnought has um, moved from the active system uh, to the other system we chose for retreat. Command token, our command token has now been placed there as well. So that's the end of the combat round. And now you have an ability round after uh, a round of space combat. So let's pass on this. Um, basically here would be, uh, there's some faction abilities that can be played here. Um, we won't go into that because we want to get to the core parts of combat. So next comes bombardment. Now you might be wondering, um, doesn't a PDS cancel bombardment because of planetary shield? Well, normally yes. However, war suns um, have the ability to cancel planetary shield, and that'll give us the opportunity here to bombard zero dot zero dot zero, which is what we will be doing. So bombardment. How do you do it? If you're not sure, you can click the help button. Um, there's a display here. Basically, we're going to click the active system, and then on that enlarged system, we're going to click uh, the planet that we want to bombard. We don't have to bombard, um, so we could pass here. But what we want to do actually first is select the unit you want to bombard with. So I click my war sun. So war sun has been selected for bombardment. Now I click the planet I want to bombard it with. There's only one planet here, so I'll click it. And now it'll tell me that the War Sun committed for bombardment, and we would select any other units if we wanted to. But that's it, we just have the War Sun, so we'll go ahead and uh, confirm our choice. And then it'll, we'll see that we have hit two times using bombardment. So let's go ahead and look at the game log there. And the War Sun, you can see, rolled four times instead of its usual three because of plasma scoring, which gives us an extra roll for bombardment. So two hits there. And no one has to assign hits here because they just automatically get assigned to the infantry. So before there were four, whereas now there is only two. Okay, committing ground forces is the same as the regular step in the previous video way back when we committed ground forces to take uncontested planet. So we just click our infantry, we'll commit all four of them. 
confirm. Now, up next comes Space Cannon Defense. Um, the rules officially state that the player invading chooses which planet's uh, Space Cannon Defense happens. This is why it's asking the invading player and not the defending player. So this is pretty straightforward. All you're going to do here is click the planet. And we'll confirm that we want Space Cannon Defense to happen. And we got lucky and avoided uh, all PDS shots. Again, in the game log, uh, you can see because of plasma scoring, there were two PDS shots. Um, however, we had a minus one modifier as well because of anti mass deflectors to each roll. Up next is ground combat. So to initiate a ground combat, you'll first see that we have our infantry to the right, the invading infantry and the defending infantry to the left. We select a planet. Again, there's only one planet here. We'll click confirm to initiate ground combat. To resolve an ability at the start of ground combat, again, this is similar to space combat. So for example, we can play more al boost. So let's double click that to give our units um, a plus one to each of their roles um, for this round. We'll pass on the other players so they don't sabotage it. And we'll pass again. Now we roll dice, just the same as space combat. All you do is click the green check mark. So we produce zero hits. Now the other player can roll and they produce one hit. So now Charlie or the Embers of Muat player has to assign hits. And again, you can see this rule summary here. So we will assign um, a hit by clicking on the planet and clicking on the infantry to assign one hit and to confirm. Again, we have the start of a ground combat. So we have the ability rounds to pass on. And we'll roll dice again. And we'll produce one hit. Defender will roll, produce zero hits. The defender will assign one hit. So now there's three infantry on the invader side to the one infantry on the defender side. Invader will roll. No hits produced. Defender will roll. Zero hits produced. Back to another round of ground combat. Invader will roll, produce two hits. Defender will roll, produce one hit. Invader will assign one of those hits. Confirm. Defender will has to assign two hits, but only one infantry is available. So actually, it'll say hits to assign one, but we can just confirm anyways. <clears throat> and so now, um, the members of Muad have won the ground combat and they're being asked to establish control. And what's going to happen when we establish control here is this PDS and this space dock will be destroyed um, unless you have some sort of relevant action card or faction ability. Um, these structures get destroyed once we establish control here. And you can see that they are gone. Now you can see that we have in our planet cards, uh, 0.0.0. .0, .0. And that's the end of the ground combat, and that's the end of the combat as a whole. So that's the end of this video. Um, I think in the next video, we'll probably look at, uh, it's going to be a lot shorter, probably component actions uh, using action cards and technologies. So thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.